world consumed as much as the average American, it would take the resources of four Earths to support the planet's population. Which raises the question, should the rest of the world consume less, or should we? American habits, though, are hard to break. We in the U.S. have gotten used to the idea that we're somehow immune to natural limits and it's the other people who are going to suffer. Good morning, Miami. The summer of 2015 is on track to become one of the hottest in history. Temperatures are expected to be in the triple digits. My mother and I were waiting for gas. The line went around the block and then some. Nothing new. But this time, the line had stopped moving altogether. A man who worked at the gas station came out holding a sign. People started yelling, and they got out of their cars and started moving towards him. My mother got us out of there fast. I've been staking out an area that's been hit hard recently by gas snatchers. I look at him, he gets out, walks right into the car. Wow, look at this, right in the middle of the day. This car's going by, and these guys are taking siphoning gas out of someone's car. In the face of mounting protests over rising gas and food prices, Congress today approved a plan to fund the construction of 40 new coal-fired power plants over the next five years. The country took the easy way out. Coal was once again touted as our so-called salvation. But the more coal we burned, the faster our planet warmed. You get the picture. We're spewing more carbon, more methane, more nitrous oxide into the atmosphere. All the bad things of climate change are coming true. And most people were just going along with their everyday lives as if nothing had changed. And until we have a crisis of some kind, I don't think we're going to be motivated to wake up and say, OK, now we have to change. Sometimes it takes a big shock to get people you know, out of the inertia that, that, that's built into the system. Calling it the storm of the century, Hurricane Linda, packing Category 5 winds. Big storms weren't unusual, but this one was bigger than the others, and it was headed for Miami. All coastal regions are being evacuated. This storm makes landfall. We are going to see a tremendous storm surge. My mother was a nurse, and she wouldn't leave until all the sick were evacuated from the hospital. My father was afraid we wouldn't get out in time, I was afraid, too. Those who make the decision not to evacuate face life-threatening danger. Between the howling winds and those giant surging waves, Miami is a very scary place to be right now. Twenty fifteen is only six years away. But many experts say that if the world has not reached an agreement to massively reduce greenhouse gases by then, we could pass a point of no return. If we're still dragging our feet in 2015, it really becomes almost impossible for the world to avert a degree of climate change that we simply will not be able to manage. The longer we wait without addressing these challenges in an aggressive way, the more likely it is we're going to end up with really bad outcomes. This morning, in the aftermath of Hurricane Linda, we are seeing the first images of what remains of Miami. Neighboring communities have been overwhelmed by hundreds of thousands of evacuees seeking refuge. The evacuation center was as big as an airplane hangar. Maybe it was an airplane hangar and so jammed with people, it was hard to move. It was hot, it was noisy. We were there three weeks. There was nowhere for us to go, nowhere for anybody to go. We watched the news on TV. I was only six, but it looked to me like the whole world was in trouble. Some 250,000 Bangladeshi refugees fleeing from last month's devastating cyclone are massing on the Indian border. Thousands riot as China faces its worst wheat shortages in a decade, the result of seemingly endless drought. One leader is gathering in Washington, D.C. to attend an emergency global summit meeting. 
Hopes are high that the world might finally reach an historic climate agreement. This is the first time the whole planet is in that kind of a crisis. And the whole planet has to uh, join in meeting a, um, a crisis of epical proportions. In 2008, the Center for the New American Security, a Washington think tank, staged an elaborate game. The goal was to simulate a global summit on climate change. The year is 2015. The context for the game is Lucy's context. Miami has been devastated by a hurricane and Bangladesh ravaged by a cyclone. The people who are playing the roles of global leaders are in fact high-level policymakers from around the world. Let me be very clear. Our time is running out. John Podesta, President Obama's transition chief, is playing the role of UN Secretary General. Indeed, today in October of 2015, no country, no city is exempt from the ravages of climate change, as we saw so tragically with the Category 5 hurricane that hit Miami. In the game, the Secretary General has asked for a 30% reduction in emissions by 2025. The U.S. team holds a closed-door strategy session. It's very important for us to strike that very positive leadership tone right out of the box. We have to be much faster and more serious about emission reductions. We need to do 30% by 2025. But there's a strong disagreement about whether the American public would be willing to make that kind of sacrifice. Basically, the odds of a 30% reduction in the United States in 10 years is zero. The world is going to hell in a handbasket. And we're saying, gee, can we stretch this out a little bit? Even if the United States were willing to make these reductions, this is a global crisis that needs global action. The U.S. calls a meeting with China. We have uh, an inherent responsibility to our people to take uh, action. In 2015, China and India are in fact projected to account for more than 30% of the world's carbon emissions. But in the simulation, they're unwilling to agree to a treaty they feel limits their economic growth. For both countries, the issue is fairness. The Western countries went through a very energy-intensive development process, became rich by burning coal and burning oil. Can countries like India and China do it without burning as much fossil fuel as the West? We have to grow greener. You have the technology and you have the capital, and you're prepared to help us grow on a greener path. China and India say they will agree to the cuts in greenhouse gas emissions only if the West hands over the technology needed to do so. China would wish uh, to get the uh, technology for the third generation of nuclear power plants. But Europe and the U.S. refuse. The technology belongs to private companies. Instead, they offer to help pay the costs of switching to cleaner energy. You do the emissions reduction, and we give the money for the emissions reduction that you've done. Because uh, if uh, simply, you know, you have the money, but you do not have the technology, and then you cannot reduce the emissions. The whole summit hinges on whether they can come to an understanding. So I, we're not putting any pressures. We're just offering, and I think uh, it's a good offer. We do not accept the offer. The planet summit broke down today when China and India refused to agree to cuts in greenhouse gas emissions. Ultimately, all the teams fell short. That perhaps is the, the saddest element coming out of this, which is the pace of change just doesn't seem uh, to be in keeping with the magnitude of the challenge. Scientists say that if this is how our leaders respond in 2015, the entire planet will be at risk. If we continue on the business as usual trajectory, there will be a tipping point that we cannot avert. We will indeed drive the car over the cliff. There was a story my mother once told me I'll never forget. You put a frog in a pot of cold water and turn the heat on. The water warms so gradually that the frog doesn't notice. It never realizes the precise moment it's cooked. The frog will sit there because it's not able to detect the small changes in temperature that are making its life increasingly dangerous. And we're in the same sort of situation. We're so adaptable in our evolution as a species, an adaptability that's allowed us to really 